Father give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. But for in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's why we assemble together. That's why we come out of our houses, even though we could be in our pajamas relaxing, because we want to know how to overcome evil. Okay, let's leave it. We want to know how to come, overcome evil with good. We want to let the world know that we are overcomers in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're so grateful to be in the house today to learn more of God. Amen. And as we go up together in praise and worship, I want you to forget about what you left at home. I want you to forget about the stresses on the job. And I want you to praise your God. Let's go up as one man. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence. We thank you, Father God, because your battle over us today is love. We declare that your glory and your presence will come in the room. We declare that today, as we bless your name, you will ascend in this house and touch us, everyone. Father God, don't allow us to leave here the same way we came. But God, we want to take something new, something fresh, something, oh God, that has weight, kabod, glory on it in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, Father God, that you would bless us as we praise and worship you. Bless the word as it come forth. Even bless the communion as we take your body and your blood into our bodies. We pray that you are blessed. Father God, we just honor you today that because we know some life will be changed and rearranged and transformed by the glory that will be felt in this house today. Do what only you can do. And we be careful to give your name the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise and worship team. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, 
have your way in our territory. Have your way in the nations of the world. Have your way in your church today. Have your way. This is my desire. Is it yours? This is my desire. Is it yours? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is God's desire. He's looking for people in the earth who he can use for his honor, for his glory, and for his praise. And today we are praying that all of us who are here and those who are the sound of a voice will be able to put our hands up and say, Lord, have your way in me. Amen. Have your way in me. Yes. Have your way in me. Amen. Amen. Is that your prayer today? Yes. Hallelujah. So I give honor to Apostle Oral Hazel and Pastor Everin Hazel in the absence. God bless them. God bless them for the opportunity that they have given me to share the word of God. I do not take that lightly. And um, because of that, I've prepared myself to a certain level, but I'm relying on the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Because he has something for me. He has something for you today that we need to grab a hold on. I thank God for those of you who have visited and came to hear the word of the Lord today. I honor Apostle Evelyn Benson and her husband, Apostle Benson, uh, for their position in the house of God, in the vineyard. God bless you, all the elders and the ministers of the house. God bless you. And all the saints of God, put your hands together for yourselves and for what God is doing now in this season. Hallelujah. Well, you know, I, I, I love to talk about worship. Amen. So it's nothing new today, amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the whole world is at a threshold of the greatest move of God. Yes. Amen. Yes, I believe it. All over the world, people are getting ready. They're getting ready for the move of God that we have never seen. Revival is about to break out. The glory of the Lord is about to be revealed. Uh, we will see healings and deliverance and, and even the dead being raised. We will yes, see miracles, signs, and wonders. We'll see the power of God being moved like never before. Things that we have waited on God for 20, 30, 40 years will suddenly come to pass. We will see the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People whose names you have never heard. Children, elderly, yeah. uh, immigrants, people yeah. who we look down on because they have set their hearts to serve the yeah. Lord. Because they have given him their hearts, their whole heart. Yeah. God was looking for somebody yeah. to use. Yeah. He was looking for the people with the big name, but they weren't doing it and with their whole heart. They were doing it for show. So he's looking for people whose hearts are steadfast, whose hearts have, have given him all. Amen. And so if it's a little child, five years old, who has given her all, his all to Jesus, he can touch that child Amen. and cause that child to bring healing and deliverance to us. Amen. He can give a prophetic word. He can give a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. Amen. So in this season, and I said we are at the threshold, but the Spirit of the Lord said, in the last days, he will pour out his spirit on all flesh. Ah, so you will come in the house and you see Turnbulls. There, we, there are relatives here. You see Turnbulls preaching. You see Turnbulls singing. Ah, relatives. And say, oh, it's the Turnbulls. The Lord rebuke you. Amen. The Lord rebuke you. Amen. The kingdom is not just made up of Turnbulls. It's made up of you. It's Amen. made up of every one of you. And Amen. God can use you. Yes. And God will use yes. you. Yes. If you give him your heart. Many times we look at people and say, Oh, I know her background. I know her family history. They wouldn't make it. Ah, it's not so in the kingdom. No. All God is looking for is a heart that is after him. He's not looking for your degree. He's not looking for your socioeconomic. 
economic status. He's not looking for the upper echelon for the one who has big money in the bank. He's looking for people who serve him with their whole heart. Because when we serve him with our whole heart, he can trust us. He can trust us to do his will. So he's looking here today. Those of you on the internet, he's looking in your home, in your house, wherever you are. He's trying to find someone whose heart is towards him. You know, we have, Jesus is coming back. We've heard it a long time. But we've gotten so distracted by COVID and a whole lot of other things. We've been gotten out of socks and have not been focused. And God is calling our people to come back to himself who are focused, who are passionate, who are full of zeal, who are desiring him, who are hungering and thirsting for righteousness. We have gotten into this relaxed mode since COVID. It was okay to stay home. It was okay to watch TV and, and see ministry on TV. And it's still okay. Nobody's stopping you from what you're doing. But what God is requiring of you and what he requires of us is all our hearts, wherever we are. Whether we're watching TV, we're in the house, because you could be in the house and your heart is home. And you could be in the house and just here because you, you, you want a person know well, I was here. You want to be on, on, on the roster. You want, what is it? Uh, Thaddeus? Present, 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 you're present in body but not in heart. And what God wants from us today is our heart that when we are here, we are here. We're here on purpose. We are here knowing what we came here to do. Not just to feel good. So today we like to discuss what the Bible says about whole heart, what God has said about whole heart. There are several things that have been spoken and written in the Bible that talks about our whole heart. Amen. God doesn't want peace of us. He wants all of us. He doesn't want us to put him in a little box in our heart. Okay, God, this corner is yours, but this part is for him. And this part is for her. And this part is for my career. And this part is for uh, my aspirations and whatever else I want to do. And this part is for my, my weakness. No, God wants all. all, all Somebody all. shout all. All. All or none. All or none. That brings us to the topic today. The heart of worship, all or none. Somebody shout all or none. All or none. So God is looking for a people who will give him all. Or well, he doesn't want what you got. If it's not all. Listen to me. I did a lot of repenting while I prepared. So don't think I'm talking to you. He's talking to us. Amen. He's talking to all of us. I had to take my part in here and repent before I can come here and speak in boldness. I am under the blood today. Amen. <laughs> I'm under the blood today. Amen. I did my repentance on my face. For what God is talking about, we have watered down. Yes. I have given God Yes. Our leftovers. Mm. But he's calling us back See. to a whole heart worship. Worship with our whole heart. God has no tolerance or use for half-hearted, uncommitted, unfaithful servants. No tolerance or use. God cannot use us. And he does not tolerate us. In preparation for what he wants to do in our lives, in our church, in our community, in the entire body of Christ, he's calling us back to himself. Every part of our being, our body, our soul, our spirit, he wants all of us. And so these are the areas I've found that he spoke about whole heart in the scripture. Praise him with our whole hearts. Yes. 
Seek him with our whole heart. Yes. Search his word with our whole heart. Yes. Seek his favor and blessings with our whole heart. Obey him with our whole heart. Cry out to him with our whole heart and turn to him with our whole heart. That begins with a heart of love. Mm. Amen. 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 The first commandment. Somebody shout out what the first commandment is. You shall have no other God before me. You shall have no other God before me. Somebody say that. You shall have no other God before me. Exodus 34, 14 says, Do not worship any other God. Hey, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. How many of you know about jealousy? Men who are jealous, women who are jealous, what do they do? They can go as far as killing somebody because of that jealousy. And our God name, one of his name is Jealous. We love Jehovah Jireh. <laughs> you will provide. Jehovah Rapha. You're my healer. Jehovah Sitkanu. You're my righteousness. Jehovah Shama. Ah, you are present. What an awesome God. El Elyon. El Shaddai. And we shout his name. How many of you ever shouted? El Kana. El Kana means a jealous God. The God who is a consuming fire. The God who is jealous. Have you ever heard that song? He is jealous for me. So this jealousy says that he is fiercely, fiercely protective of vigilant of one's right of possession. God is fiercely protective of his people. God loves you so much. He loves you so much that he is fiercely protective. Hallelujah. And he doesn't want peace of you. He wants all of you. Because when he gave, he gave all. He gave all of him so he can get all of us. He was an example to us. Hey, I'm giving you my choice possession. I am giving you my only begotten son. I'm releasing all that I have. I'm expecting you to release all that you have. That's what I was saying to Sir Sharon. So what does God require of our hearts? Begin with love. And thou shalt love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Everything belongs to Jesus. He's looking for people to fall in love with him. And in, in Psalms 9-1, it says, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Evaluate yourself today. You don't have to answer. Answer in your spirit. Did you praise him with your whole heart this morning? As you join with praise and worship, did you praise him with your whole heart? That's what he's looking for today. That when we praise him, we praise him with our whole heart. Psalms 47 7 says, it teaches us that we must praise him with the understanding. For God is king over all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. Our heart is involved in our praise. Our mind is involved in our praise. Our body is involved in our praise. Our spirit is involved with our praise. So we can be saying, we lift up holy hands in the sanctuary. Praise ye the Lord. And our hands are folded. We bow down and worship Yahweh. And we sit it. We wave our hands to the King of Kings.
And so it's not just the body, but it's more in here because out of the heart, yes. out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks yes. and it affects the body, it affects everything. So when we are praising God, you know when I'm praising Him, I say, for you are great, you do miracles so great. I'm seeing the Red Sea parting. I'm seeing water coming out of rock. I'm seeing God turning something around for me when I was crying out. So my mind is engaged. My body is engaged. My spirit is engaged. I'm doing it with an understanding. I'm not just singing. Yes. Yes. Every praise is to our God. And the beat is good. So we're going with a beat. But is the understanding there? Is our whole heart part of it? Are we singing every praise, but we're thinking on the bill to pay tomorrow? Or what can I cook when I get home? We're looking at the time. Okay, prison worship done. I know that um, Apostle Oral don't have church very late, so let's see how things are going. And our mind, we are not engaged. We are not engaged. Whole heart means engagement. Whole heart means being compassionate. Whole heart means being full of passion. We wonder why nothing happens. We wonder why there are drizzles and not showers. We wonder why there's parchness. And there's not a flourishing land. There's not an oasis in our lives, in our church, in our community. We wonder why we come in the same way and leave the same way. Because we're not engaged. It's not with our whole heart. We come to do praise and worship. We didn't come to be a praise to God. When we do it with our whole heart, we, we are it. The scripture says, I will make you a praise in the earth. You will be a praise in the earth because you go beyond praising. You become a praise. You are now a vessel of honor, giving God the praise. You are now the sacrifice on the altar. Let us not be like the people in Amos' day. God was angry with the praise and worship service services in Amos' day. In Amos 5, 23, he said, Take away from me the noise of your song. I will not even listen to the song of your harp. The Amplified Version said, Take the noise of your songs away from me. They are an irritation. All over the globe on a Sunday, we are irritating God. Irritation. It's an irritation. You're making me sick with a with a keyboard. You're making me sick with the with the drums. You're making me sick with it with the horns. You're making me sick with the tambourines. You're making me sick with the saxophone and the trumpet. It's a bunch of noise. Isaiah in a place that in Isaiah 12, he said, What is this trampling I'm hearing in the courts? We are called to come into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. And he is saying, what noise am I hearing? There's a difference between whole heart and mouth. He says, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far. It's a hard word, but it's a now word. It's a right word. We do go through things that make it very difficult for us to praise. Why? Because we have acquainted praise to good feeling. That we praise when we feel good. But you know, the greatest victory I've had in my life is when I praise when I give a yet praise, when things are not going yes. good, when things yes. look bad, yes. when finances are low, yes. when there's sickness in the house, oh, when my heart is broken and I cry out in praise, the glory of the Lord, the King of glory comes in and he turns things around. That's when we see miracles. That's when we see the glory of God. When we praise, when we don't feel like it. Shabrande, Reba Kosha. Oh God, let your praises rise. Let your praises rise in the earth. 
the man of praise, the sweet psalmist of Israel, the man whose heart was after God, was in a place of depression and oppression, a difficult place, but he encouraged himself in the Lord. Last week we heard about encouraging ourselves in the Lord by Apostle Evelyn. He said, why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. Hope in God. Hope in God. Hope in God. Things ain't looking good. Hope in God. The finances are bad. Hope in God. Relationships are bad. Hope in God. The future looks bleak. Hope in God. You are lonely. Hope in God. Hope in God. The psalmist said he encouraged himself because he knew God. You know God. The scripture says, you are my witness that I am God. Yeah. You have proven God before. Yes. You know that God is God. Yeah. So now that things are going wrong and things are not looking so good, hope in God. Encourage yourself in the Lord. And he made a decision. For yet shall I praise him. Somebody needs to make that decision today. That regardless of what's happening, regardless of the pain, regardless of the hurt, regardless of the disappointment, regardless of the frustration, ah, you may not get what you want, when you want it, and how you want it, but God is still God. Yes. He has not changed. That's yes. why we ought to praise him. He's still God. He's still a deliverer. He's still a good God. He's still faithful. He's still waking up this morning. He is a way maker. Promise keeper. Miracle worker. He will do what no one else can do. Hope in God. And praise him. Ah, you gotta speak to yourself. Yeah. Ah, there are some times I go in the mirror and I say, Judy, praise God. Yeah, yeah. I look my face straight in the eyes. I say, Judy, praise the Lord. Yet shall you praise him. Ah, people like to say, oh, Judy, you're so constant. Every time I see you, you're praising. Every, you are clueless of what happens behind that praise. Right there. Hallelujah. There are times we have to encourage ourselves in the Lord and talk to our soul and talk to situation around us and say, yet, yet, yet shall I praise him. Yeah, the enemy comes like a flood, but the spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against him. He will not overtake us and he will not steal our praise. Somebody has to make that decision today. Come hell or high water. We say in the Caribbean, whatever happens, God gets the praise because he deserves it. He deserves the glory and the honor. Ah, we wouldn't get through everything today, but we're going to continue. I will yet praise him regardless of how I feel. We like to want to feel good to dance. Hey, when I had COVID and everybody leave the house, I will come out. Because just before that, I did a dance course for a year. So I will come out and put salt up the earth. Yes. And I will do my... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I said, Debbie, you think I'm a fool? You think I'm going to stay here? And, and, hey, I couldn't do it as long as I did it before because I couldn't breathe good. But whatever little energy I had, I will get out and dance. I say, yes, shall I praise him. You would not steal my praise. You wouldn't make me feel down and oppressed and depressed. I am a child of God and my God has not changed. So the little shenanigans and the little things we do in the background, you're clueless. And I'm clueless of what you do. But guess who is not clueless? <laughs> he sees us in the bedroom. He sees us in the secret place. He sees us when we are on our face crying. He sees us when we are wetting the pillows in the night. He sees the pain and he feels the pain. But he still requires our praise. Because our praise gives him entrance. Ah, oh, we 
we love Psalms 24 and we love to quote it and it's such an awesome lift up your heads oh you guys be lifted the everlasting door and the king of glory shall come in it sounds like a time of joy it sounds like a time of excitement but there are times it's not joy nor excitement it's a time when you're really low but you have to lift up the gates still lift up the gates of praise so he can come in like the time when Paul and Silas were in prison, they had to lift up the gates of praise. And he came in. Ah, uh, Jehoshaphat worshippers and praisers are in the midst of uh, a time when everything was against them. All these armies came. How many of you ever felt like the odds were against you? Like every time you feel like you're, you're making your way out, something comes and beats you down on the head. And then you wait a little bit and you try again. And then you get blows on your head again. And it seems like all around you, there's trouble. But guess what? Jesus is a very present help in the time of trouble. He specializes in trouble. What's going to give us, give him entrance in our trouble? When we begin to say, Lord, you're great. You're mighty. You're awesome. There's none like you, God. There's none like you, Lord. Mighty warrior. Awesome in battle. Great healer. There's none like you, oh God. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. In the midst of the pain, we see you. In the midst of the hurt, we see you. In the midst of the darkness, we see you. Oh, we see you high and lifted up. High and lifted up. High and lifted up. up. God, there's none like you. Ah, that's how we praise with our whole heart. <laughs> ah. It's, it's like uh, when we praise, when we see we cannot praise in rough times, we know it's not our whole heart. Come on, come on, come on. It's right when we cannot praise when it's difficult, we have to ask the Lord, Lord, help me to praise with my whole heart. Yes. Because now the depression has taken over your heart. The hurt and the anger have taken over your heart. And praise and hurt and anger and all those things can't work together. No. God wants all of your heart. Release the anger, release the hurt, release the pain. Get them out and let him flood your heart with gratitude towards him. Amen? Amen. So we are going to praise him with our whole heart. Our whole heart. Our whole heart. There's something else that, um, a few more that he said in the scriptures about a whole heart. The next one is seek him with your whole heart. You know, let me just tell you a little story. I was on a plane going from Washington to Istanbul at the end of May. And these flights are so long. It's, it's like nine hours and... I had to go to the bathroom several times, like everybody else on the plane. <laughs> so sometimes we're in line. Apostle Evelyn knows about it. She's traveled all over the world. Sometimes we're in line waiting. But this time I went and a couple of the restrooms were occupied, but there was one that was vacant. But I couldn't get to it because there was a man on his knees and on his face worshiping Allah and he was bold enough uh -huh. passionate enough zealous enough to kneel in the plane bow in the plane and speaking to Allah in the name of his God Muhammad and I'm like, my God, what we Christians do? <laughs> my God. Right here in St. Thomas, I've been to a store. I 
purchased, I, I got the stuff I wanted and I went to the cashier. And the cashier was not there. And the child said, Mommy is praying. I said, okay. She came out after about five, ten minutes. Because they didn't want to disturb Mommy. Uh -huh. she's, she's doing her ritual. And she came out wiping her eyes. Her eyes are red because she was praying to her God. I've gone to a particular drugstore here in St. Thomas and it was closed. They have a note on it when they're coming back because they were so passionate. Serving their God with their whole heart. That they will shut down business to take them off to go and worship their God, not the true and living God. So whatever a million dollars could have been coming through for those two hours, but they are set and seeking their God who they cannot find, they would not find, they would not be satisfied, they would not be fulfilled, and they don't have eternal life because they're serving God another God. And he said, have no other God besides me. I'm saying all that to say that people in cults and other religion, they sacrifice so much. Sacrifice so much in this world. And they have no eternal, based on our scripture, they have no eternal life because Jesus is the way. The truth and the life. And if we don't go through Jesus, it's a waste of time. Even so, we Christians who profess that we are Christians have done a lot of sacrifice. We have sacrificed much. Ask us who are born in it. How many of you were born in Christian home? Sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. You're going every day. You're fasting, you're praying, you're going on the street, you're going, doing so many things. We're talking about whole heart still. But there's a scripture that says in the last, in the end, that some people will say, Lord, Lord, we did this for you. We did that for you. We did that for you. We did, and he said, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. I never knew you. I never knew you. If it's not from the heart, it's nothing at all. I never knew you. There was no heart to heart, no spirit to spirit relationship. I never knew you. You did this thing because you wanted to do it or because somebody required it of you. But you never was intimate with me. You never did it with all your heart. There was a guy. Let, let me not go ahead of myself. And the second point was seeking with all your heart. And I, I'm talking about people who are seeking. There are a lot of people who are seeking. And some of them are switching from one religion to the next. Everything they hear, they're trying and they're seeking. But they're not seeking God with all their heart. Because he said, you will seek me and you will find me when you have searched for me with all your heart. I will be found of you, said the Lord. There's no finding of God without seeking with our whole hearts. He wants us to pursue him. You know, you know how your boyfriend or your, your husband have pursued you, women, adults? And vice versa, some women do the pursuing. And they're pursuing, they won't give up, they won't give up, they won't give up, they won't give up. That's how we need to be with God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things will be added. The disciples sought God with a whole heart in the upper room. They stayed, they tarried, they waited, they seek God, the face of God. They waited on God. And God, many people have left God and gone to the witchcraft workers. Jesus. Because God's taken.
waiting too long. It's not about the time God takes. It's about what heart are you seeking Him with. Because He is steadfastly looking for people who are seeking Him with a full heart. Whole heart. He wants to stand strong on our behalf. But because we didn't get our result, we call the hotline. Mother Annie, Mother Veronica, Mother whoever they are. Oh <laughs> Father this and Father that. Speak Holy Spirit, speak. Hey. And they're in the church. They come up in the church. They're in the churches. They come and sit to check us out and to surveil what's happening in the church to know how to go back to the camp of the enemy and say, okay, there's a little problem there, there's a little problem there, we're going to do what we got to do. David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after. I will seek after to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in the temple. How many of you want to see the glory of God? The glory of God means that God shows up, there's healing, there's deliverance, there's breakthroughs, and there's testimonies. That, hey, I came to the house of the Lord and I got a word that sustained me through the week. I came for prayer and God did it. Uh, I, I applied for a loan and I came to the house and asked for prayers and the Lord did it. That's okay. The Lord did it. And so there are testimonies of what the Lord is doing. Have God done anything for you? Yes. Hallelujah. So let us desire to seek after him and to inquire in his temple. Hallelujah. The scripture said, this is a generation that seek your face. That seek your face, O Jacob. There's another scripture that says, when you say, seek me, I say, your face, Lord, will I seek. So God is talking to us today, seek me with your whole heart. Somebody should say, Lord, I will seek you with my whole heart. Oh, we should respond to heaven today. Seek him with our whole heart. So we have spoken about praising with our whole heart, seeking with our whole heart. And we're going to talk about searching his word with our whole heart. Psalms 119.34 says, Give me understanding and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I will observe it with my whole heart. So we see what God wants. I think the kids can go home with whole heart today. And he doesn't want part of us. He doesn't want us to just do things in a vacuum. He doesn't just want us to do because we can do. He wants our heart to be involved, yes. engaged in what we do for him. Amen? Amen. Search his word with our whole heart. Many people search the word of God to argue their point. To justify their sin or to discredit its authenticity. Yeah. They have a problem with the word yeah. of God. Is it truly the word of God? Yeah. So they go in there to find problems. They don't understand what the word of God is all about. Come on. They have no idea. And even believers are questioning the fundamental truths of the scriptures. Yeah. Sometimes I talk to believers, I'm like, what? <laughs> They're questioning baptism. They're questioning the Trinity. They're questioning all sorts of things like, have you learned? Have, has anyone taught you? They have been taught, but they're listening to all kinds of other stuff. And God wants us to search his word with our whole hearts. David was intrigued with the word of God. He described God's word as perfect, pure, true, clean, and right. The word of God is described in the scripture as a mirror. 
What happens with a mirror? You stand in front of a mirror and if there's spinach in your teeth, you want to take it out. If there's something in your eye, you're going to remove it. If there's something in your nose, you're going to remove it. That's why you have a mirror. You want to see yourself to fix whatever it is. If the hair is out of place, I don't have a mirror. So my hair, the wind went with it someplace. So it can be all sorts of ways. But if I have a mirror, I will fix the hair. That's for sure. And so the mirror, the word of God is a mirror. When we look in the mirror, we will see ourselves as we are. Oh, we don't strip and say, Psh. I don't care. No. We don't. We're going to fix that lipstick because it's all the way down here. And we're going to wipe that chin off from lipstick and fix everything. The eye, eyelash that's falling off, we're going to put a little bit of glue and stick it back on. Whatever is out of the way, we want to fix it. So the mirror is right before us today. We need to fix it. Yes. Whatever it is the Lord is showing us Amen. today. Amen. Let's fix it. Amen. 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 The word is like water. Yes. It refreshes yes. and it gives life. So when we read the word with all our hearts, then we are refreshed. We All of a sudden, you see how some plants are. It was so patched out there. And the minute the rain starts to come, the leaves start to raise the little heads. Yes. Hey. And, and they start to look a little green, a little fresh. All the, the, the plants that were drooping down, they start to water. The word is water. It gives life. The word is truth. What we have to understand that Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by him and without him there's nothing made that which was made. Jesus is the word. So when we go to, to the word with our whole heart, we have communion with Jesus. Yes. We are speaking his language. We are yes. reading his language. We are yes. hearing his heartbeat. Yes. We know where he's, where he's at and yes. what he wants. Yes. Uh, the word sanctifies. He says, sanctify them through my truth. My word is true. It cleanses. It washes. It purifies. The word is the sword of the spirit. We can fight with the word. You know, there's some word I use a lot. Ah, I will them. I will them. By your stripes I was healed. I will them. I am the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. I will them. Ah, the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. I will them. There's some word that I just use. I use my sword. That gives victory, protects and preserves us. The word is a lamp. And it's a light in the most dark places. The Lord gives light so we know what to do and how to do it. I just want to expose myself here a little bit. I told you I was repenting, right? <laughs> so there are times I'm reading the scripture and I'm going through the scripture for, for the year. How many of you have been trying to read the Bible for the year? Have any of you succeeded? <laughs> so there are times I'm just I have these three scriptures to read and I'm just racing through the scriptures racing through because I want to meet my quota mm. for the day so we have these three um, chapters and I want to accomplish that so I'm going to read but have I done it with my whole heart no. did, did, did God speak to me was there any water in what, was I enlightened? Did I repent for any wrong thing in my life? Did I see spinach in my teeth? <laughs> and when the Lord spoke, if I did see, did I do anything about it? So there are times I've rushed. And I say, 
I, I repent, Lord. I repent. Your word is you. You are your word. When I rush through the word, I'm rushing, rushing through the spirit of God. It's like, hey, I just want to. I just want to hear, I just want to do, I just want to meet my culture. Same thing we do at church. Okay, I'm going to come twice for the month. Apostle Oro can't say nothing, I'm making an effort. But I come and I sit down and do nothing. Not, no engagement. So if I would go through the word of God with a pen and a paper, on my iPad or my phone and as as I read the Lord speak to me like he's been speaking to me through this and I write them down and I apply it to my heart and I take the stuff out of my eyes because I'm good at seeing other people's eyes I take what's in my eye out and all the other things that he's talking to me We'll be sanctified. We'll be clean. Our yes. hearts will be to a place where he can use us. We began by saying the great move God is about to do. And not just about to do. He's doing. But he wants us to be prepared. So I don't want to go through all the points. Because I want you to take something home with you today. But we need to praise God with our whole heart. Seek him with our whole heart. Search his word with our whole heart. Ah, there's so many points I want to touch, but we can't do it all today. The last point. Obey him with your whole heart. Now this is, I remember the Lord telling me to do something in my prayer room. He said, I want you to put the names of God in your prayer room. I wrote it. I wrote it down. And that's about two years ago. But while I was going through this word, I made the names of God a project. I called Thaddeus. I said, get some paper, get some crayons, get some let's um, posters of the names of God. You see, sometimes God tells us to do things and we don't run to do it. He wants us to run to do it. Run! Sometimes I send daddy us for something and he's so happy to do something. People go running. Sometimes he falls down in the process because he's in such a hurry to please mama. And then, then he'll come back and he'll wait to see my approval. And that's what God wants us to do. Yes. When he tells us to do something, he wants us to run to do it. And just stay waiting like a dog who, who, who the, the, the uh, owner says, fetch. Uh -huh. And the dog goes, <laughs> grabs it and come back, put it to the owner and get it done. He's like waiting for the approval. Yes. He's waiting for that bone. He's yes. waiting for whatever that, that shriek is. Let me tell you, we hold up our blessings. We hold up our blessings when we don't obey God. And when we don't obey Him in the timing He wants us to obey. Yes. So I was telling the Lord while we were doing the project, I said, okay, Lord, so Thaddeus, Thaddeus, I know, Lord, that I have not done it the time that you want me to do it, but Thaddeus is now learning your name. <laughs> okay. That's no excuse, eh? That's no excuse. When God talks to us, let us do it. Amen. So I want to end with obeying with your whole heart. Psalms 119.69 says, The proud have forged a lie against me. But I will keep your precepts, obey your commandments with my whole heart. There was a king called Saul in 1 Samuel 15, 22 to 23. He disobeyed God. And the, the prophet of God came to him and said, to obey 
is better than sacrifice. Somebody say that for me. To obey is better than sacrifice. We, we do a lot of sacrifices. How many of you feel that you sacrifice a lot? You sacrifice a lot. You give a lot. You do a lot. You, it's a lot of sacrifices. But God said, I don't want it. I don't want your sacrifice without your heart. I do not want your sacrifice without your heart. I do not want your sacrifice without your heart. Does the Lord delight in one offering and sacrifice as much as obedience to his word? Your word that I will obey you, Lord. I will 
hallelujah it's all about you I'm coming back to the heart of worship it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the things I've made it when it's all about you it's all about you I'm coming back I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you all about you it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus. All about you. All about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. All about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Father, we tear down every altar, every altar, everything that we have placed before you in our lives, Father God. You say, have no other God besides you, Father God. You have called us, Lord, to give you all of us, all of us, all. And so today, God, every altar that has been erected in any other name but your name we tear it down from our hearts we pull it down from our hearts oh we wash ourselves for the word today we ask you to cleanse us God we ask you to purify us God we ask you to prepare us to be Father God a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true ah that you will reign on the throne of our hearts we destroy every idol. We destroy every idol. Everything that lifts itself above the knowledge of God in our lives. We pull it down. We pull it down. And we destroy it by the blood. Rebel 
What a word. Glory to God. We're coming back to the heart of worship. Where it's all about our God. Amen. I was totally blessed and challenged. Amen. 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 Right before we go, um, move to the next part of the service. Um, Sister Ayona, I want you to come. You were on my heart. And so I prayed for you. And um, I said, Father God, if you want me to release this word, allow her to come to church. And when I saw her bright and early, I said, my God, my God. And it was right in line with what uh, Minister Judy was preaching. Let me put on my mask. You know what? I'll stay far. It was right in line. For the last 12 months, you have been hit and re-hit. And nobody knows the trouble that you've seen. But Iona, Minister Iona, you know how to dwell in the courts of God. You know this. And so uh, this week the Lord reminded me that a lot of times when we see the enemy hitting you is because of where you're going. Look at Moses in his infancy. The enemy wanted to cut him off from his divine place. Jesus, in his infancy, Joseph, he was called to be a governor. David, he was called to be a king of two provinces. And he was hiding in a cave. Sister, you can't hide no more. You have too much invested in you. I need you to survive. Your kids need you to survive. Your co-workers need you to survive. Not just survive, but to thrive. You have the DNA that you have is that of thriving like a horse. Just fast in the spirit. And sister, I say to you, arise and shine. For your light has come. It's not coming. You're waiting on God to do whatever it is you're praying for him to do. But sister, in the spirit realm, your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is not going to arise upon you. It is risen up on you. It's here. It's here. Your deliverance is here. The manifestation is here. It's not you. It's even in your mouth. It's here. And so I say to you, today's a turning point. Today is a point where you say it ends today. And I say again, it doesn't matter what you see manifested in the spirit realm. It's over. It's over. It's over. And I hear your spirit saying, I want more. I want more. And God is going to pour out upon you of his spirit and he's going to renew some things that you thought were dead some things that you waited for and it's not happening he's going to renew it and since when he does that with new levels of blessing comes new levels of responsibility so the pause button is off and it's time for you to run again it's time for you to run again. Again. There's so many people that need you to survive. So do it. So help me God. So help you God. In the name of Jesus. It is so. It is so. Glory to God. Put your hands together. And bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. The Lord is smart. And he has released his mind, the mind of Christ to you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. God knew that she was going to be in service. I didn't know. Amen. 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 You know, we're going to take communion, but I have not even told my husband. But man of God, I want you to do the communion. And I want you to do it the way that Jojo does communion. This 10-year-old boy, the boy is challenged in his body. But every day, he takes communion. I want you to do it the way Jojo do it. Amen. There's an anointing on that. Hallelujah.
Let's all rise up to our feet, please. In the name of Jesus, and even as I break this bread, any resisting spirit which is not of God be broken in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Let's eat this bread. And even as we take the blood is the blood that cleanses. The blood that washes by the snow. Says, come before me as you are. Though your sins will, it's like scarlet. It's as red shall be white as snow. And it's the blood that heals. The blood that cleanses. The blood by which we overcame the devil. Even the blood of the atonement. The blood of the sprinkling upon the mercy seat. The blood that intercedes on our behalf. That even when we fall. Jesus sits on the right hand side of the Father and says, Father, for this reason I shed my blood. And as we open and drink his blood, may this blood go through our veins, yes. every sinew in our body. Every organ, our hearts and everything, where there is sickness, because the blood heals. By his stripes, we are healed. Therefore, even as we drink his blood, that we will be healed in our bodies, in our emotions, every sickness. Let us do it with consciousness. It's not a formality. In our conscience, we are doing this with understanding, knowing that we have the blood of the everlasting covenant running through our veins. Shall we drink? In the name of Jesus. 
upon the basis of your word, Father, we have done in accordance to your word that even as we have taken and eaten your body and drank your blood, today we are reminded of where we sit with you in glory. For this is the blood that was slain from the foundations of the earth. That today we be called the sons and the daughters of God. Therefore, Father, we come to you that today we are cleansed. Today we are healed because of the blood and the body. The blood that, that never loses its power. We thank you, Father, for what you have done for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. May be seated in God's presence. Thank you, Lord. Amen. It's offering time. Hallelujah. It's a time for us to give our seeds of love to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Is our time to worship Him with the fruit of our body, which is, you know, we go out to work. That's your body. That's, that's being, you know, you go and sometimes we get more than a paycheck. You go out there and, and people are coughing, but you have to go to get money. So today we're going to give God a tenth of our earnings. We're going to give Him an offering of thanksgiving, thanking Him for the strength that we have to go out to our jobs. Amen? Glory to God. So I want you to prepare. And um, please know that you can give also by way of your credit card. Uh, Brother Ruel is going to be at the end. He can receive your credit card. Or you can give on PayPal. Uh, PayPal.me slash Global Life Church uh, on PayPal if you're giving. Amen. Via the internet. Amen? We, it, we encourage you, as you are giving and watching the service, to also be a part of the worship of giving. Amen? Glory to God. Let's all stand with our gifts of love. And then who is, who is going to be ministering to us? Minister Sonia? Okay. Sister Stacy is going to minister to us and collect. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, Minister Stacy. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let me cry, O oh Lord, and unto my friend. From the ends of the earth, I cry out. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Stretch your hands this way to the offering. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're going to call on Sister, um, I'm sorry, Minister, uh, you in the back. Come, put your hands. Yes, you. <laughs> Sharon, Minister Sharon, to pray over the offering. Amen. And to release a blessing. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father God, we want to thank you, Lord, for this blessing, oh God. We want to thank you, Lord, for the breath. We want to thank you, Lord, for the anointing, oh God, and for the sweat, oh God. Because, Lord, you said, by the sweat of your, by the brow of your sweat, sweat of your brow, you shall eat. But, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that the cross has been broken. And we thank you, Lord, that the seed is blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, Lord, that you will give those that don't have but Lord, I thank you because the biggest blessings and sacrifices will be offer ourselves unto yes, you. So I thank you, Lord, thank you, for touching this blessing and this offering and touch the hearts yes. of your people and let them know that you are ever, ever have them on your mind. Yes. So I thank you, Lord, again for touching this offering and touching your people. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen and amen, amen. and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Glory to God. We're going to give you the announcements. First of all, we want to thank you if you tuned in on uh, YouTube or whatever, any other social uh, platform, Facebook. We want to thank you uh, for joining us. And we hope that you were blessed by what you heard today, but we want you to, as we in the audience, to not only be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. God bless you and see you again next week. Tell a friend, amen. Put your hands together as we sign off. God bless you.